Welcome to the 2019 Hank Fraley League Rundown. This is going to be a lot of the same material if you're uh, Chris Middlestad or Eric Waldman, <clears throat> as I did a similar review for the renowned Mansion Draft, uh, where I finished in second last year, I'll have you know. Um, sorry, third. Finishing third in that one. Second in our league, as you know. Uh, and the year before that, I was third. And I think it's time to start accepting the fact that I am elite. If you take a quick look at the simple all-time rankings, okay? A number of places, more than anyone of all time. All right, maybe not Ronnie who's got three championships. That's pretty damn good. I'm going to admit that. But I'm always up there. All right, my rating is 890 lifetime, okay? That is above renowned fantasy professional analyst Nick Creed Bratton Mariano, right? I got ripped on last year. Brandon Cooks, Cooper Cup on the same team. What happened? What happened? I was an ACL, ACL tear away from going all the way. James Conner got hurt. Brandon Cook, uh, uh, Cooper Cup tore his ACL, which made Brandon Cooks terrible. I mean, I had the best team, all right? And I consider myself a champion from last year, all right? Let's get into it. Let's, let's get through these draft results. I do not want to spend too much time on this. I really enjoyed the write-ups. <clears throat> like I told the Mansion crowd, I do not have that time. I'm working on... Seven whiff zones right now. Um, it's really taken off uh, while I was in Italy. I got a lot of orders. I don't know why, including one from our favorite Yankee killer, Luis Gonzalez. Uh, recall that the most famous bloop single in MLB history. So it's exciting stuff. It really is. But um, I'm just running out of time here in life. Uh, I'm excited for the season to start. Let's jump into it. And I'll say one more thing, too. Um... A, continue to be impressed by this league. Um, same thing with the mansion where uh, you read these Twitter drafts. These Twitters, oh, look at my team, maybe. And the team is just stacked. You know, uh, Tyree Kill goes in round four. Uh, uh, you know, Devontae Adams goes in the third. I mean, it's just results that are just so stupid. And then I look at our league. And there are no bargains. Um, so I'll, I'll give us that. Um, and the other thing I'll say is I, I quite enjoyed this year drafting early. Um, I think it makes us more advanced. I think it makes people react to risk earlier. And I like that. I think that if we drafted tonight with all the new information, it just basically allows... You know, the Matt Vallas of the world who don't do their research to basically have a fair chance. And I don't like that. I like, you know, the, the fact the guys are paying attention in early August. What are the trends? What are the risks? And you saw that, right? Lamar Miller should never have been drafted because he's a bad player. Bad things happen to bad players. Andrew Luck. I didn't want any part of that Colts offense. Zero part of that Colts offense before this draft. And what happens? The risk, which was right there for all of us to interpret, for everyone to see, was clearly there. Do not draft Andrew Luck and be wary of his skill players because he's not healthy. Now, did I call him retiring? No, no. But I make smart decisions I believe, two years in a row would have it, that say, fade that offense. And that's what I did. So let's get into it. Round one, nothing really exciting there. Uh, unlike myself and Mansion, Ben decides to go for Zeke at four. 
in hindsight, yeah, now it's looking pretty damn good, right? He's close to signing six-year 90 extension, which is absurd. He's returned from Cabo. That's looking like it panned out two weeks ago. I would have bet some serious Kiyosh that he would have missed some time. And at 1.4, it's a little rich for me. But you know what? Ben gambled. He's a gambler. And it looks like it's going to pay off. Uh, Eric uh, decides to go with Devante at 5. Uh, really have no issue with that over DeAndre um, as the number one wideout. Uh, just because that week-to-week -week consistency is just so sexual. And you would think that uh, new coach, refreshed Aaron Rodgers, um, healthy Aaron Rodgers, only makes him that much more attractive. Whereas, you know, DeAndre, I mean, listen, nobody loves Deshaun Watson this year more than this guy. Nobody, okay? Uh, now with Stills, the offense is prolific, the line is improved with Laramie uh, Tonsil, uh, right? <coughs> you know, Laramie Tonsil. Um, they might not need to rely on DeAndre like they did last year. I mean, he's still going to eat, but I got no issue with Devontae. Let's keep skipping through. David Johnson finally goes at eight. I'm feeling more nervous about that, uh, to be perfectly plump, uh, than I was two weeks ago, which I think is a fair st uh, statement. Uh, you know, the preseason was a disaster for the Cardinals, but, you know, all the players maintain they are not showing their hand at all. Uh, the problem is the line. There's nothing you can hide there. That's That might be the worst line in the league. Uh, we might have the worst defense in the league. I say we. I don't know why we say we. I have a lot of Arizona skill players this year. The concern is that, yes, while the Cardinals are going to run a lot of plays— if their defense can't get the offense back on the field, you're going to have 10-minute drives for the opposing offense in the third and fourth quarter. Uh, so I'm a little wary there. And, and, and at this point, if I were to draft today, I'd feel more comfortable taking Nicholas Chubb and even James Conner based on that preseason usage, uh, quite frankly. I think oh, there was a lot of hate for James. I think all that spell, I think if you drafted Jalen Samuels at this point, you're not looking at anyone you can plug right now. You are literally just holding a very valuable handcuff. Nothing wrong with that, but just saying, if you were expecting 7 to 10 touches a game, that can happen. Uh, Julio at 11, Travis 12, no issue there. I had to take Michael Thomas. I regret that. I think the pick was Juju Smith-Schuster. Um... I don't know why I did that. I, I think I tried to just be like a kind of a safer guy this year, but I think it was a very poor move. Love the Dalvin pick at 14 over uh, Mixon. And then obviously love the Schuster pick. So I'm forced to go Odell. I got to pray for safety there. So I kind of have a yin and a yang in terms of top wide receivers. And I would have loved if Dalvin had fallen to me there, uh, but he doesn't. And I think that's the end of that tier, quite frankly. Although you can you can you can say that Tyreek's in that. So top, what is that? Seventeen players, pretty, you know, very obviously should be those first seventeen picks. So proud of the league um, for 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 being smart there. Uh, no surprises really. Maybe just some inner shuffling. Joe Mixon, I'm concerned about. Gio Bernard just got signed to a huge contract extension today. Uh, you don't pay someone that much money to be the 10th highest paid running back in the league to get three or four touches a game. Uh, that offensive line's terrible. That defense is terrible. And while I love the talent of Joseph Mixon, nobody gets wetter for the talent of Joe Mixon than me. However... However, uh, I think this is probably the first uh, bad uh, pick um, because I th – oh, man. Yeah, I know. I think it's bad. I think it's bad. I think it's bad. Um, although if you really – I mean, sorry. This is this is where the drop-off is horrible. I, I'm, I'm remembering now. It's like every single pick in this round you can have a huge issue with. Uh, Mike Evans, I talked about him. I don't think he's a good player, but now I'm kind of like, 
going back on the fact, yes, he's a compiler. Yes, he's red zone inefficient. Yes, he's catch inefficient. Yes, uh, he ha- he doesn't do yards after the catch. It's he catches 50% of the balls thrown to him, and then he falls on his stomach. That's Mike Evans. But if there's 170 targets there, and we think Jamison Winston's going to throw for 55 or 52, 5,200 yards, then Mike Evans will just end up being a wide receiver one by default. And I have to eat that. That's my fault. Um, I love the confidence in Aaron Jones with CJ. Um, and I think, you know, while I've, I've taken him in the third, um, arguably this isn't a bad spot, right? carrion has got huge fleas now. Huge fleas. His center is hurt, Frank Ragara. Uh, they signed CJ Anderson. They signed JD McKissick. I don't think he's getting goal line. <coughs> I think he's going to be taken off the field quite a bit. And they're a bad team. So uh, very volatile for, for carry on. I hate Keenan Allen. Here's a hot take. Mike Williams is going to outscore him. Book it. Book it. Um, Todd's and Gurley finally goes to Eric at uh, 2.10 in a round two. I think that's... Oh, man. I got issues. I st- I still have issues with Todd and Leonard. I know that Todd can finish as the number one back this year. I know. I know. I think we all do. Um, but we've seen now that during the most important time of the year, Todd's not dependable. Um, and I just don't think they are going to be allowed to run him into the ground. And you might say his touches might be, you know, he'll be just as valuable if he's you know, has 70% of the volume as last year, but that's his ceiling. You're drafting him at his ceiling now. And if he's missing games late in the year, eh. Leonard Fournette, a lot of people are hot on him. A lot of people are hot on him Um, for a comeback. uh, I think it's terrible, though. Um, I, I just can't. I can't. I can't invest there. I really can't. Um... It's the ankle, it's the knee, it's, I don't know, just, I'm done with him. I, it's not someone I will ever touch because of the injuries. Um, Amari, fine. Marlon Mack, I mean, pre-Andrew Luck, I get it, right? You know, maybe, to be honest, you know, maybe Devontae Freeman was the pick for him there, um, just based on Freeman's renewed health. Um, based on there's no Tevin Coleman. I mean, there ain't shit behind Devonta. Edo Smith sucks ass with a deal, though. Um, and now Marlon Mack, right, who doesn't catch any passes, um, who, you know, games are going to be tighter because they don't have Andrew Luck. You know, I think Marlon Mack is hurt by the Andrew Luck retirement more than T.Y. Hilton is. Right? And I think you all agree. I, I don't think I'm crazy here. I think Eric's is... I think Eric's scared. I think Troiler's scared by this because he, he was the most game script dependent running back in the league last year. And if this offense isn't churning, he's not getting those goal line and all that volume rep. I'm scared, man. I'm really scared. So, Damn. Like, you know, but he's got McCaffrey, so he, oh man, so he goes running back, running back. All right, fine. Then you got Devontae and Stefan, just two kind of like really boring picks. I, I got to be honest, man, I, I'm a little surprised by the Stefan Diggs pick there. Um, you know, it seems like the value, it's just, it's very rich for me. You look at this third round, though. I mean, then you just then you got to go back and say, well, then who's the pick? Well, Chris Godwin's super high, and maybe that's not the pick yet. Even though I think there's a hugely reasonable argument, hugely reasonable argument that Chris Godwin outscores Stephon Diggs and Adam Thielen. It's enormous. Again, based on their based on that game script, based on his talent based on the fact that Mike Evans is realizing he might not be the number one dog there anymore, right? And and Thielen was terrible last year in the second half uh, when they fired that coach, John D. Filippo, who's now in Jacksonville. 
because he was running 65% pass plays, because he was running too much. They don't want to do that. Stefanski don't want to do that. They want to run the ball. And while I believe this is the year that Diggs finishes ahead of, of Thielen, I wouldn't be shocked if he finishes outside the top 15 receivers. I really would not. I really would not. So Godwin goes, which again is early, but I like the aggressiveness of Trutler there. Uh, I like Edelman by Ben. I think that's smart. T.Y. Hilton goes to Eric. And now for me, that's too... I'm not liking the start of that team. I don't like that, man. You know, I, I'm, I'm off Hilton. I'm, I'm off. I'm always off Hilton. And he never makes me pay for that. Maybe one, you know, whatever. He leads in yards a couple years. Like, f that. F that. Damian Williams goes. I mean, all the, a lot of these guys should not have gone ahead of Kittle. That's just the fact of the matter is you had something so safe in Kittle. If you want to go, you know, get yourself a little excited, you know, look at Kittle's burst and spark score. I mean, that's going to get you excited. Right? And whether it's Jimmy G or Nick Mullins in week eight, this boy going to eat. And he don't even need the same amount of yards because we know he ain't getting the same amount of yards because we know that he had 800 yards after the catch last year, which is completely unsustainable. But he is like the legit number one receiver in that offense. And it's a solid pick. And I th who was that? Every day I'm, I'm rustling. I don't even know. Is that Cody or some shit like that? I don't even know. I love that pick, though. Robert Woods ahead of Brandon Cook's. It's safer. I get it. I love the I love the even keelness of Robert Woods. It's, it brings a very Devonte Adams esque thing. You don't have to ride the highs and lows, right? And Brandon Cooks, it, right? If Cooper Cup's not the same, which I don't believe is the case, I think Cooper Cup's bat hundo percento, and I, I think that makes Brandon Cooks a very very strong candidate to do what he did last year when I drafted him really smartly when all the haters, Waldo Jr., Ben Fuckler. All them motherfuckers told me, you're an idiot. You can't have two wide receivers on the same team. But what I do, what I do, I just keep placing. That's all I motherfucking do, I keep placing. So y'all can talk that talk, and it doesn't matter, because I'm the best. And third last, two years ago, second last year, this is my year. All right? We haven't even talked about, who did I pick yet? Oh, it's not my pick yet. All right, Derrick Henry goes to Matt. Terrible pick. Oh, my God. Like, horrible pick. Zach Ertz. You're right. We talked about that. Too high. Patrick Mahomes in the third. Oh, my God. Terrible, terrible, terrible pick. And then I decide to go Josh Jacobs. I decide to go Josh Jacobs ahead of Chris Carson and David Montgomery. And I might be regretting that. I admit it. Who is that? Is that mom? Who is that? Sorry about that. I'm babysitting. So I, go, I, so I go Josh, right? Which I think is... I don't know. Just give me the three down workhorse, right? Give me the give me the Cadillac Williams type of usage with this guy. We don't know if he's going to be prolific. He's never handled the rock like that in college. I get all that. But... And the Raiders offense might stink. But... I don't know, man. I just I, I wanted a piece of him this year. I had to have him. Melvin Gordon's a terrible pick right there. I mean, to pass on Melvin Gordon, thinking you're going to be – or to, to pass on Chris Carson, David Montgomery, and I'm going to – I have to argue Mark Ingram. To pass on that because you're trying to be a sly mother and think he's going to sign when he has no leverage. I mean, this is a different situation than Zeke, man. The Chargers don't give up about him that was obvious two weeks ago and now you know he's missing the season that's a waste man and waldo jr's team is fucking terrible right off the bat because of that pick right there and then he goes galladay which is nasty just considering the fact that oh i don't know uh tyler lockett cooper cup you know uh, robbie maybe you could uh, like fuck that just terrible terrible turn by him i just started going marketing him even though 
So basically, I'm going to try to get my thoughts back. I didn't want the same team as Pat Mead. I have almost the exact same team as Pat Mead if I go Chris Carson here. Even though he's probably pretty much the pick over both Jacobs and Mark Ingram. Right? Montgomery, I just didn't want to deal with, is Mike Davis going to be a little bit of a thing? Just enough just to piss him off. And you know Tariq Cohen's going to be there. And you know Tariq Cohen's a huge bust this year because he's not getting the same usage as last year. Nagy already said so. Montgomery is a beast. Uh, Vader at tackles. But I just, that Ravens line, the way they're going to run the ball, having the the you know the cheat code quarterback to freeze the middle and outside linebackers and see, freeze the safeties who are trying to plug that they don't know how to defend Lamar. Mark Ingram gonna eat. That boy gonna eat. I don't want to hear about this twenty nine year old bullshit. I don't want to hear about none of that. That boy gonna eat. So I took his ass. All right, I took his ass. That's that's who I was targeting. And I took his ass. So good value for Carson to to uh, Sean. You know, Montgomery goes, Watson, you know, I mean, I guess it's 14 teams, so whatever. Like, I, he, Watson, I wouldn't be shocked if he finished better than Mahomes this year. Like, for real, though. <clears throat> uh, no issue with Lockett. Love that. I think round four, I think the worst pick of round four right now is Tevin Coleman. Besides, besides Waldo Jr., I think Tevin Coleman, not even listed as a starter as of today. And we knew that. We knew that he has never been able to handle the full load because he lacks elusiveness. He's not a 25, 20 carry guy. He's not a number one. He'll be used by Shanahan in interesting ways. But Matt Burrito proved how good he was last year. And all the all the, the background numbers supported. And now he's listed as a starter. And even if it is 50 40 split in favor of Coleman, which I don't even know if I buy. The fact that this boy went around four and Matt Burrito went in like round seven. I mean, that's the difference. So if I'm if I'm making a point right here, it's that Ronnie is not going to back to back championships because of this pick right here. Because of that pick. Sony Michelle was the pick, right? Mike Williams goes, I have to like Mike Williams this year, even though I can see him busting hard, but I have him in Mansion, so I, I have to love that. Josh Gordon goes to Gem. You know, that news had dropped. Um, you know, really like a fifth-round pick if you adjust for the fact that it's 12 team, which I think is appropriate. Um, you know, he took him over. Cup, who's got the risk. Robinson, who I think I, I'm kind of on Robinson again. I think we all are. But the fact of the matter is... That Mitchell Trubisky is not good, and and that volatility and and they're playing in the in the in the NFC North in those in those tight just nasty games. I think you know it's those it's those six point games from AR fifteen that's gonna kill. Uh, Robbie Anderson goes to the Viper, and um, you know. I, pfft, I don't know, man. Like, I, I love everybody talking about that breakout, and I get it. But, like, dude, he has murderer's row of cornerbacks. Murderer's row in the first freaking eight weeks of the season, dog. There is no relief. He's facing number one corners every single day. And I'm probably going to eat it because he's probably going to go off on Tredavious White week one anyway. Right in my face. Right in my fucking face. Um,. But it's just something you have to think about. Now, who went after him that is is better instead? I would probably feel more comfortable with a Curtis Samuel, you know, a DJ Moore, a Tyler Boyd, right? Like those guys I would have probably rather had than Robbie for me. Alshon goes to, you know, the, the, the expert. And, and I don't, I'm not going to lie, man. I mean, and I know Nick's got his crazy ass algorithms and he's got spreadsheets so complex that it breaks the computer he needs like you know shit from like austin powers just to keep it running and shit like that but 
I mean, he got to he got to speak to me on this. I got to call that boy and be like, "What are you thinking, dog? Like, why he always go for the boring ass, washed up loser in a crowded offense? I don't understand his South Sean Jeffrey pick. I really don't." And then, I mean, I love the fact that he picked Latavius because that's my boy. That's like my RB, my RB five in the mansion. I I can't even start him in this league because. You know, I, I had him. I got him in, like, round eight or something like that. So, he picks him at pick 57, which is crazy. But he knows something that we don't know. That boy is an expert, right? So, I think the difference with Latavius really is the fact that technically he's more elusive than Mark Ingram. We know that. So, that's good. And he he just scores touchdowns. Like, he literally, literally, literally leads the league in touchdowns over the last three seasons. or some crazy stat like that. Um and those situations last year where Kamara was actually getting a mad goal line carries instead of Mark Ingram, I think they might just specifically go with Latavius Murray this year. And this boy might just get 12 touchdowns. Like, no problem. And I think that's why Nick picked him, right? Because who goes after that? Although, it, so this is crazy. Because there's, I mean, a couple running backs, I'm like, whoa, he picked him over. Yo. So James, what I get, fuck that. I know he's. I know he makes me eat my words every year. I just like what the fuck. But it's Miles Sanders in round five. That what does Nick know that we don't know? Because everyone in the fantasy community is saying Miles Sanders is a league winner, and quite frankly, I'm scared. I mean, some people there are. Some people might say, listen. Not only is Miles Sanders the same thing as David Montgomery this year, but he's better and should have been drafted. And Eric out of value. But I'm really scared of Doug Peterson, man. I really am. Darren Sproles is there and healthy. And and Jordan Howard is not going away just yet, even though he's not that good. Like, I don't I think it's gonna be a slow start for Miles, right? Like it might be ten to twelve touches game one. And he might work he might be working to a league winner, but it's it might be painful for a little bit. Whereas I think Montgomery could get off to a quicker start. Um so uh, Lindsay, I'm fading, right? Um I think we all are fading. I think they want Royce to be the guy. I don't think they want their hundred and ninety pound, you know, supposed to be satellite back carrying a rock that much, but the reality is it'll just be a 1A, 1B, and we'll see how it shakes out for a bad Denver offense. Tyler Boyd to Ronnie, love that pick, makes up for it, got no issue there. Um, you know, this is the second draft I've seen now where Curtis Samuel, I'm going back up to Troiler, what goes over DJ Moore. And I think the reality is that Samuel Stock soared. <laughs> Because of this training camp where he's blowing by defenders in practice because he has to blow by defenders in practice because they have to make the quarterback look good. But the reality is, I think you'd be an idiot to bet that Curtis Samuel finishes above DJ Moore. DJ Moore is the real number one. He just is. And, um, you know, good for Chris Middlestad. Nice land right there. Calvin Ridley goes... Jarvis Landry goes, I'm out on that. And I'm out on that because I'm in on Hollywood Higgins. I just am, right? You saw a nice report from Evan Silva today on Twitter about Hollywood Higgins. Um, I believe he will be the end up being the wide receiver too, right? As soon as Freddie comes cooking in the kitchens last year, when he came in, Baker's offense shot up. And uh, I guess whose stock went down immediately? It was Jarvis Landry. That's the reality, right? So how Jarvis Landry goes here over O.J. Howard, who falls to me, is insane. And the second that I get O.J. Howard here, I won the draft, right? He should have never made it to me here. He should have never gone after Evan Ingram. Aaron Rodgers shouldn't have been picked in round five. I mean, these are bad picks. Jarvis Landry, I mean, what are you doing what are you doing you gave me the lead now waldo makes it up for his poor start with an austin eckler pick right there to make up for the gordon but it's just like all right you burned your fourth round pick so congratulations i guess then he goes for Kenyon drake <clears throat> i don't know man um bad offense 
really awful offense. Like, I guess he'll find his way to RB15 somehow, which implies that a lot of these backs are going to bust ahead of him. We'll say whatever. Christian Kirk, what more do I have to say? I'm, on, I'm in on the Cardinals offense this year. Uh, I'm not scared of that preseason usage. That's bullshit. Um, he'll be the guy. He'll be the guy. Um, yeah, could I have gone Will Fuller? Sure. Injury concern hurts, though. And the only other person, I think, in that tier before the significant drop-off is Corey Davis, technically. But um, I don't know that there's a team I hate more in the world than the Titans. Like, that's the furthest team I want to be on right now. Like, I don't want no Redskins. I don't want no Titans. I don't want no Dolphins. Except Caleb Watch. <clears throat> um, so I, 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 went with, I went with Kirk, who I think has breakout potential in, in year two, right? Hunter Henry goes, that's a nice pick by CJ. He's having a nice little draft here. You got Hunter Henry, DJ Moore, um, uh, Tyler Lockett, uh, Brandon Cooks. I mean, this boy is a nice team. Aaron Jones, like, this boy is like... I'm liking this this team so far. Um, let's see what else happened. AJ Green finally goes. I get it. Rashad Penny's terrible. I'm not buying it. He's a he's a bust. I think we can rule him a bust already. So round six is a little rich. Although again, I get it, guys. Running backs extremely thin here, but I'd rather have Matt Breida over Rashad Penny. Sterling Shepard could be just fine, just nice. Terry Cohen, a huge bust. Terrible pick by our terrible pick. Um, Sammy Watkins could be a league winner for Ben. Uh, I believe that. I definitely believe that. Eric Ebron, horrible pick. Horrible pick in the sixth round. Um, and now it's even worse. Like now he might shouldn't even be owned without Andrew Luck. Um, D.D. Westbrook's a hot pick. Everyone's on that ass. So it's just, it's really hard for me to buy into Jaguars. But, hey, you got the right coordinator there. You got a better quarterback now. Um, I'd be curious to see if Foles actually, you know, really elevates this offense or if somehow they just revert, he, if he's just the same as Blake Bortles. I don't know. Larry Fisher, another old, boring guy to Nick. And it's just hard for me to wrap my head around this because... I mean, quite frankly, guys, has Nick had success in the last few years? I don't know. I I think a lot of these, you know, these oversimplified veteran picks are just like the models are just not working. Like, at some point, you just got to get your guys, right? Now, maybe you could argue it's thinned out and blah, blah, blah. I don't know, man. That boy, 37, 39, 42 years old, man. I'm done with that. Mark Andrews, round seven. <clears throat> He believes in that. Um, over Vance McDonald, I'm not there yet. Um, I'm not there yet. But hey, um, Marvin Jones is in there. Deion Lewis, ugh, uh, I don't like that. Uh, Emmanuel Sanders looks kind of hot now after he busted off that play. So Eric, you know, took him right there. That's fine. Um, I like Vance McDonald by that was a good pick, but that's is that two tight ends? Yes, it is. That's his second tight end. Very odd move there by Ryan Denis. Um, Naheem Hines in rounds. Holy shit! I mean, Matt Breda is the pick of this round, and it's not even close. Um, Baker Mayfield, brilliant pick by me, right? I was debating between him and Matt Ryan, but Matt Ryan was probably the pick. 13 dome games, and meanwhile, um, you know, Baker is playing in the AFC North. He's got to play the Ravens twice. Um, you know, those games are always low scoring as well. Something about the North, man. It's 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 just like Jon Snow in the winter. But, um, yeah, I thought, but I thought that was, I don't know. I think Baker because, I don't know. I think let's just let him be the number one quarterback. Um, John Brown goes, what? What? How does John Brown go before Dante Moncrief? Please riddle me that. How does that happen? 
How do I get the second wine receiver and the second target on the motherfucking most highest passing offense in the league? It doesn't make sense. I don't know what Waldo was doing here. And now I'm just, I'm set for success. Tyrell ugh, feels early to me. You know, over Dante Pettis, over Marquez Scantling, over Anthony Miller. I mean, that's, that's gross. Like, ugh. Jared Cook, that's nice there. Funchess, terrible. Terrible pick. Uh, with with he might again. You can, you can drop him now. You can safely drop him. David and Joku, DK Metcalf. Yikes! So I guess he's playing week one. David Moore, I was super high on. Nick picked him. I picked him in the other draft, and then he got hurt. It should have been the David Moore show, but yeah, I think DK Metcalf will be dropped by week three. You can book that. Devin Singletary, but <clears throat> before the Lashawn McCoy news goes. Um, that's pretty hot. Um, although that's going to be an ugly three-headed backfield. It's like, what is Devin Singletary? He's a 150 carries, maybe. Maybe 120, right? If Gore gets 150, Devin gets 120, and Yeldon's getting third down, like, it's still not that hot. But there's upside there. Steal of the round is definitely Dante Pettis. All that news is overblown. I probably should have taken him, actually, over Moncrief. That was stupid. But, um, you know, the news was it was very sour at the time. <clears throat> uh, Aguilar, I think, is pretty gross there as well by Cody. Peyton Barber is just horrible. I, I, you might as well... Light your ass on fire, and and then and then sit on your draft pick with that. Just horrible, just a horrible pick. No upside there. Someone you know is going to be frustrating to start. Did the impossible. I said this in the I said this in the last uh, video in the mansion. Did the impossible. Two hundred fifty carries for less than a thousand yards. It's never been done in history before, and I'm surprised Eric made such a horrible pick. I mean, it's truly a horrible pick. Um, Miller's hot by Creed, but I think he's hurt. Darwin might be dropped now by uh, by Nick Moran, although at the time it was a very hot pick before the McCoy. Now McCoy looks great to Cody. We like Lamar Jackson. Tony Pollard, hey, that's just a pure handcuff by Ben. Fine. Worked out. You got Ezekiel anyway, anyway but you're not going to get anything else. Golden Tate, four days. Oh my God, this dude just loves Giants. He just really loves Giants. Jalen Samuel is looking like a waste. Howard's ugly. Kute is gross. Mike Davis, gross. Duke Johnson, pick of the round. I mean, this before before the injury to Lamar Miller. This was this was a very hot very hot pick in this round. Um, uh, just smart. Like was gonna get work. Um, and now, now he's going to be an, 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 an RB2. I and mean, that's just the reality. I make a what should be a hot pick in Kalen Balazs, and we know that we sniped Clayton Bigsby. But here's the reality. Kalen Balazs might be the worst running back in the league. Um, so, you know, I did it to kind of screw him a little bit so he wouldn't have that backup. Um, and really, I think what he did instead was, was really good, which is he took Michael Gallup. Um uh, because he looks great. Um, Jordan Reed's, you know, everyone thinks it's so hot, right? He's the only target in Washington, blah, 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 blah. All right. And he's healthy finally. But is he? Is he? Yeah, he's just sure to crush dreams. He's just sure to crush dreams. Uh, we're in round 10 now, by the way. I picked Justice Hill, probably the pick of the round. Um, and now I have the Ravens backfield, like, you know, all sewn up. Do I have Gus Edwards? No. Do I care? No. It's either going to be Mark Ingram's year or Justice Hill's year. That's the reality. And now I have the best offensive line on my team. Um, Traquan Smith, pretty hot. Uh, I liked Cortland Sutton. I think that's kind of cool. Um, you know, you see Nikhil Harris, Damian Harris. That's a really nice pick by Every Damn Russell. And again, I don't know who that is. Um, <clears throat> Ronald Jones, yikes, that's disgusting. Uh, he'll be dropped. Kyle Rudolph is gross, he'll be dropped. 
Uh, Anunwa is a nice hot pick by Eric Troiler. I like that a lot. Justin Jackson, very hot pick by Nick Mariano right there. David Moore should have been a hot pick. Um, Debo Samuel listed with the third. Eric Troiler on round 11. Um, I think there's a path for him to emerge as the true number one based on his body type. Um, but I just think that it'll be such a slow start that Debo will be dropped by Eric Troiler at some point, uh, just out of pure frustration. McCole Hardman's kind of hot, um, but you might not see much for a while. So again, this guy could be dropped. Jamison Winston, probably pick of the round by Ben Schmuckler. Right? I think there's over a 50% chance that Jamison Winston could lead the league in yards, could throw for 37 touchdowns, um, don't really care about the interceptions. Andrew Luck, terrible pick by Eric, but it's round eleven, so who cares? He already got a he already got a backup quarterback. He got Tom Brady, dropped him. It's fine. It it works. This is how deep quarterback is. This is why you don't take a quarterback in round three and four. I don't know why we have to say this over and over. Um, I, I, let's monitor specifically the teams that took the quarterbacks. Right, that was round three, two. Sean, so he'll be terrible. And round four, uh, Deshaun Watson, he'll be terrible. So I made the mistake last year. It cost me a championship. I did that twice. I took Deshaun Watson and Aaron Rodgers in both leagues, and I cost myself two championships, right? I mean, that's pathetic. Um, let's keep it going. This is not a great review, I'm not going to lie. I don't really have it tonight. Um, <clears throat> Russell Wilson... I, I guess is now your team name. I guess that's clever. I don't even know whose team that is. This is like the one team. I don't remember who that is. Um, Kenny Stills by Matt ends up being a lot hotter now than it was at the time. Um, Chris Thompson, because he's a Redskins fan. Robert Foster, he'll be dropped. Uh, he'll probably be a thing later in the year, but not right now. Um, you know, I go C.J. Anderson because he's going to be a thorn and carry on side. That's just the fact of the matter, boy. Uh, Trey Quinn, kind of a hot pick, but not hotter than Hollywood Higgins in round 12. This might be the pick of round 12 here, is Hollywood Higgins. Although I will say um, that this is one of the stronger rounds relative to some of the, I mean, we've seen some ugly rounds that we just went through. Right, round nine was a oh my god, was a disaster. Round eight and seven kind of have some ugly things. Round twelve, right? Trey Quinn upside, Higgins upside, Parker, I'm out on a defense goes, oh my god, Jesus Christ. Uh Jack Doyle, very hot pick now. Very hot pick. Ty Montgomery, there's a lot of upside there. Marquise Lee, uh, DJ Shark was the pick. That was the Jaguars pick. So nice job by every damn rustling Albert Wilson has upside. Austin Hooper has upside. Trey Burton's terrible and not going to play week one. John Ross was a terrible pick by Eric Troiler. Uh, Malcolm Brown, a very good pick by Cody. Really good pick. And then Paris Campbell, a very good pick by Nick. So most of the picks in that round were really nice. Um, and then he goes Jimmy Graham, which again, this is where... You know, he's he's so good at what he does, Nick Moriano, and, and in the way that he approaches this game. He knows the data. He's able to spin it for himself. He's able to do things physically that we can't do. And I have to ask the question, what is going on with Jimmy Graham? What does he know that we don't know? And now it feels like Jimmy Graham might finish as a top five tight end because he picked him up. I don't know. Um, Hawkinson to Eric Troiler, who's probably going to struggle, but it's a backup. He's got his Mark Andrews locked up. Um, Delaney Walker, not terrible. Colt Beasley, not terrible pick there. Uh, Herndon, you know, he's got to wait five games, but, um, I mean, that's technically the pick of the round. Kareem Hunt, horrible pick. Really? Really? You got to wait, you got a four man bench and you, and we got to wait 10 weeks for Kareem Hunt, I mean, that's bad. That's bad. And Shawnee, I hate to say it, but that is, I mean, that's a horrible pick. Horrible pick. Really bad pick. 
Um, I pick a great defense right there. Just another really good pick by me. I think I had a fantastic draft. I, and I think anyone who's, who tries to, to tries to chirp at me and say otherwise, you're an idiot. I mean, you can't identify a mistake that I made except for Mark Ingram, which is not going to kill me. And maybe um, Kalen Balash. But that's fine. Um, <clears throat> and then I go, you know, just a high, super, super high upside running back, an amazing handcuff in Alexander Madison. Um, you know, meanwhile, losers like, you know, Miles Boykin and Ito Smith and, you know, Jalen Hurd are going in this round, right? And that's it. That's the draft. 45-minute review. That's what I was targeting. Uh, it's going to be a great season. I can't believe we're finally two days away. I can't, I can't believe it. I'm excited, man. Um, and I just, I love the competitiveness of this league. And I love the fact that this year, and by the way, I'm projected for most points week one, because that's how, that's what I do. I put together the best team. So I don't give up about my draft grade. What did I get? A C minus? Yeah. Okay. Um, <clears throat> but the, here's the reality. There was no arguing this year. We did the draft. It was quiet. It was perfect. We, did, we didn't do auction. We did redraft, which is the best style ever. Um, because, let me say this. You can throw all the data that you want at me. <clears throat> that, oh, uh, blah, 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 blah. Um, you know, uh, you know the, 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 the guys with the first five picks do the best. Like, whatever, dude. Like, we, I'll go back and disprove that in our own league, probably, right? Was Ronnie a top five pick last year? Probably not. I don't know. Maybe. But that really shouldn't matter because the fact of the matter is, especially this year, if you want to talk about this year, first of all, if you're picking in the top half, like, yeah, the top three picks are, like, super low with. But then the guys that they had to pick in the, in the second or terrible like so risky like the fact that i was talking about ty Oden going like the back around two is like that might that might kill your draft right there meanwhile the people in the back of the draft like myself have two guaranteed studs no risk studs if you pick at 11 and 14 or, or 14 15 12, 16, whatever that is that we were in the back, like we were set up for success. We had the best drafts, not the front of the draft. So I don't want to hear that. And we did. And guess what? You know, I haven't heard a lot of noise this year from the experts that are really chirping for auction this year. It's been very quiet on that front. Um, I've gone on too long. I love you guys. Um, it's going to be a great year. I'm going to win. And, um, now let's get after it. Let's start watching Hard Knocks. Peace.